Good morning and welcome to the First United Pentecostal Church of Okinawa's online Sunday school class. Are you excited to find out more about God and his word today? I am. So today's lesson is called King Uzziah's Choices. And we're going to learn about how God will prosper those who seek and obey him. Have you ever played um, Scavenger Hunt? Do you like that game? It's a lot of fun, right? So if you don't know, Scavenger Hunt is a game you play with a lot of people. And you break off into groups. And you're given a list of items you need to find. And to make the game more challenging, sometimes those items are uh, specific. You can't just go get a pencil. You need to find a green colored pencil. Or uh, let me see what else. Maybe you can't just have for like larger when you take a picture you can't just take a picture of a chair. It needs to be a gaming chair or it needs to be the color purple or so they make it more difficult. And then the goal of this game is to collect all the items before the time runs out, or just to have the most amount of items than any other group um, by the time that time ends. So either way you win. On a grander scale, it might even be a little more difficult actually. I've seen this game played at a mall before, and so you can't take the items with you, correct? So like I had said earlier about taking a picture, you would have to take a picture of the item, but to prove that it wasn't just you who went and found the item, because in that case, your say group of eight people could just split up, everybody find an item or two, and come back together, and that makes the game too easy, right? You need to be together. It's a teamwork game. So they'll say, when you find the item and you take the picture, you need to have at least five of you in the picture. If there's any less, even if it's just four in the picture, you don't get the point. It doesn't count. You have to follow the instructions. The same way you have to follow the instructions of this game we need to follow the instructions that God gives us in his word. Um, because as we seek God's will for our lives, obedience is the key to the process. Remember it says, God will prosper those who seek and obey. You see, in the game, if you don't follow the rules or the, the guidelines exactly, you don't get the point. And the same thing with God's word. You might know thou shalt not lie, but if you don't follow it, if you don't obey it, then it doesn't, it doesn't, um, like, oh, it's okay. You knew the rule, so it's okay. You know, it doesn't count as a sin. <laughs> that doesn't work. You know it, you have to obey it, okay? So we need to seek more about God and his word and to obey his word. Okay, so uh, next we're going to pray. So let's seek God's will for our Sunday school lesson today, as well as for the service today, okay? All right. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus for this day God to be here to learn, God, through this lesson, which you have been trying to speak to us about seeking you, Lord, and about obeying you. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us, God, open our ears to hear and to truly listen, God, and open our spiritual eyes, God, so that we can understand it, Lord, in the way that we might be able to, Lord. Maybe others wouldn't be able to, but in the way you know, God, that you would lead us and guide us to understanding of your word and your truth, God, and help us to obey. And Lord, we pray for your hand over the service today as well, Lord. 
and that you would lead it and guide it by your will, God, bringing in those who are hungry and lost and in need of you, Jesus, and using us, Lord, to pray for them, God, that you could do your perfect will in their lives. And we glorify and praise your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So let's turn in the Bible to the book of Matthew in the New Testament. Okay, so book of Matthew, and then we're going to go to chapter 6 in verses 9 through, let's go up to 11, okay? So this is where Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So here we're giving praise to God. We're exalting him for who he is. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. See, God's will is already planned out. He already knows the perfect will, the perfect way your life should go. And it's already planned out in heaven. We need to pray it down to earth and submit ourselves. God, what is your will? Seeking it. What do you have for my life, God? Seeking him and then praying that it become a part of our life, that we live it. Give us this day our daily bread. See, when we are living God's life, he feeds us and he takes care of us. That spiritual bread that we eat every day, it sustains us and we learn and we grow as we're seeking him. This same scripture is mentioned in Luke chapter 11. It's worded a little different though. Um, verse 2 and 3. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. As you can see, we want to seek God's will in our lives. And we want to grow closer to him and finding out more about him. So this is a song I think you've heard before of the Lord's Prayer. So let's think on seeking him and finding him, going closer to him while we sing this song.
ever made the choice to disobey? What were the consequences? So sometimes people who are successful forget how they got to where they're currently at. Today we're going to talk about a man who forgot that his blessings came from God rather than himself. We're going to begin in the book of 2 Kings in the New Testament and in chapter 15. So today we're talking about Uzziah. But in this chapter, he is called Azariah. So it's just a slightly different translation, but it's the same person, okay? So in chapter 15 of 2 Kings, verses 1 through 7, In the twenty and seventh year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, began Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, to reign. Sixteen years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jacolia of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Save that the high places were not removed. And the people sacrificed and burnt incense still on the high places. And the Lord smote the king so that he was a leper unto the day of his death and dwelt in a several house. And Jotham, the king's son, was over the house, judging the people of the land. And the rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Jotham his son reigned in his stead. So now let's turn to the book of 2 Chronicles. It's just two books over. The book of 2 Chronicles. I need you to turn there because I'm going to have questions and you're going to need to answer. Please go to the book of 2 Chronicles, and then we're going to go to chapter 26. All right? All right. So, here are the questions I'm going to ask you. Beginning, Uzziah was crowned king at 16 years old by the people of Judah. King Uzziah reigned for five minutes or 52 years. Well, in verse 3, it says he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. So he reigned 52 years. For many years, King Uzziah saw God and chose actions that made God angry or pleased God. In verse 3, oh, I apologize. In verse 4, it says, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So, King Uzziah did things that pleased God. With God on his side, King Uzziah and his soldiers chased away enemies and won or lost every battle. In verse 5, it says, um, let's see here. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. That means he won every battle. His army, an elite force of warriors, trembled and shook in their boots or used shields, spears, helmets, bows, and slings to destroy their enemy. A little further down, look at verse 14. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and haberdons and bows and slings to cast stones. So... Ooh, that was a long one. 
King Uzziah was also successful at constructing buildings, raising livestock, and growing food. He was famous and gained respect from everyone or no one. Verse 15 says, And he made in Jerusalem Indians, oh, uh, there it is, and his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. So everyone knew of him. Unfortunately, King Uzziah was puffed up with pride. In all his success and popularity, he forgot how God had blessed him with triumph or disappointment. And God blessed him with triumph. One day, he walked into the sacred sanctuary of God's temple and burnt incense a major offense against God. Only elephants or priests were permitted to burn incense. In verse 18, it says, um, It apprehendeth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priest, the son of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. So the priests were the only ones who could burn incense. More than 80 priests rushed in to stop King Uzziah. They told him the Lord would no longer honor him. King Uzziah fumed or cheered. And this is found in verse 19. It says, Then Uzziah was wroth. He fumed. Suddenly, he broke out in a terrible skin disease called leprosy. King Uzziah left the temple and spent one day or the rest of his life alone, away from everyone he had ever known. In verse 21, it says, and Uzziah, the king, was a leper unto the day of his death. So he spent the rest of his life. King Uzziah prospered when he obeyed God. When he stopped seeking God, he lost the blessings of God in his life. All right, so that was a little messy, so let's go back over it. All right, so Uzziah was crowned king at 16 years old by the people of Judah. King Uzziah reigned for 52 years. For many years, King Uzziah sought God and chose actions that pleased God. God blessed him and caused him to prosper. With God on his side, King Uzziah and his soldiers chased away enemies and won every battle. His army were an elite force of warriors. They used shields, spears, helmets, bows, and slings to destroy their enemies. King Uzziah was also successful at constructing buildings and raising livestock and growing food. He was famous and gained respect from everyone. Unfortunately, King Uzziah was puffed up with pride. In all his success and popularity, he forgot how God had blessed him with triumphs. One day, he walked into the sacred sanctuary of God's temple and he burnt incense there a major offense against God. Only priests were permitted to burn incense. More than 80 priests rushed in to stop King Uzziah. They told him the Lord would no longer honor him. King Uzziah fumed. Suddenly, he broke out in a terrible skin disease called leprosy. King Uzziah left the temple and spent the rest of his life alone, away from all the people he had ever known. King Uzziah prospered when he obeyed God. When he stopped seeking God, he lost the blessings of God in his life. We should remember that God is the source of our blessings and not be puffed up like King Uzziah and look at our own abilities. Rather, we should look to the Lord and focus on him. Let's look at our memory verse. In 2 Chronicles, 
chapter 34, verse 31. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. Now these words were written by King Josiah, not King uh, Uzziah that we were talking about today. So our personal quest to obey God believe, begins in believing in his word. His word tells us about the gospel of Jesus Christ and that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and then he was resurrected again on the third day from his tomb. If we sincerely believe the Bible and the words that are written in it, we'll continue to seek him by seeking his word and will obey his instructions and be born again of water and of spirit. Do you remember what being born again of water and of spirit means? So in Acts 2.38, I know you've heard it. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, that's the water, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is of spirit, correct? So, when we seek and obey the Lord, he blesses us with the gift of his spirit. So, I don't know, maybe you have the Holy Ghost, in which case we can thank the Lord and say thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost that leads and guides us. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can seek it and you can get it. You can get it at home while you're watching this video or after. You can get it when you come to church. It doesn't matter where you are. If you want it and you're seeking him for it, you can get it, okay? So we're going to give thanks, though, for his spirit, for the Holy Ghost that can or does live inside of us. This is an old song, but it's a good one. Join me in worship. I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says, I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says, well, I've been to the water and I've been baptized. My soul got happy and I'm satisfied. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Just like the Bible, just like the Bible. Just like the Bible says I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul Just like the Bible says I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul Just like the Bible Well, my soul got happy and I'm satisfied. See, when we get the Holy Ghost, when we're seeking after God, our soul gets happy and we're satisfied in Him. That is the gift of having Him in our lives. In the next verse, in uh, Acts 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 39, it says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So now let's go ahead and give him praise and worship because the promise is for us 
and our family and our friends and our aunts and our uncles and as far off all around the world is for everyone. So let's give praise and worship to God. It's for me, it's for you, it's for your children and their children too. It does something that nothing else can do. In Acts, the second chapter, you can read it for yourself. Don't have to ask anybody else about the Holy Ghost that Jesus has given away. It's for me, it's for you, it's for your children and their children too. It does something that nothing else can do. In Acts, the second chapter, you can read it for yourself. Don't have to ask. Anybody else about the Holy Ghost that Jesus has given away? In Acts, the second chapter, you can read it for yourself. Don't have to ask anybody else about the Holy Ghost that Jesus has given away. does something that nothing else can do. Having the power, the Spirit of God live inside of you, it changes you like nothing else can. You couldn't change yourself that way. No one else could ever change you in that way. Only God, His all power. So with the gift of the Holy Ghost, we gain an overcoming power and boldness to do what God instructs us to do. Through our obedient action, we are rewarded with God's blessings in our lives. We sometimes can feel a peace that passes all understanding when we follow God's plan. You know, sometimes God doesn't reveal his whole plan to you and he only gives you the next step. Do this. And that can be scary, but when you're following God's plans, you're seeking him and you're obedient. He brings a peace. And then you don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid. And there ha doesn't have to be any fear controlling you. Because you know you're in God's hands. He's taking care of you. Our ultimate reward, though, will always be making it to heaven and getting to live eternally with our Savior. So, have you heard of the National Anthem? Have you heard of any other anthems, actually? The national anthem, of course, is about our country and how it came to be, uh, what freedoms we stand for, who we are as a people. Anthems bring together people for different reasons. It could be, um, let me see here, what did they say? It could be... Uh, different nations, groups, a team, like um, maybe a football team has their anthem, or a soccer team, or a belief. So anthems are like a rallying cry. It gives you that, ooh, that go team go, we can do this, we got this, right? And so I have some anthems in my life, and they stick with me. Almost every song, I'm, I, I memorize lyrics pretty easily. And so they'll pop up into my mind, and, you know, it, it'll just stay with me for a time. And sometimes, you know, you're struggling, and you just really need that reminder. God's all-powerful. He's almighty. He's there with you. Or other times... Yeah, you're just going about life and all of a sudden you're just reminded of his goodness and his grace, that he deserves all worship and praise. Um, so anthems help rally us and remind us about what we're really about. So I encourage you to make an anthem that will help you to remember to seek God and to obey him. 
And if you're struggling, maybe find a song. Um, we have seen lots of songs in church. Find a song that might help you remember to seek him and obey him. Okay, that's my challenge for you this week. So today we've been learning about seeking him and obeying him. So what are some ways that we can seek him? How do we seek him? We seek him through prayer, through reading our Bibles and studying his word. Because reading it and studying it are two different things, but really just studying it. Listening to some preaching. These are different ways that we can seek him. What are some ways that God might prosper us for being obedient and following his instructions? He can bring us peace and joy, and he helps us through the trials and can give us rest when we're having a hard time sleeping, or even when we do sleep, it's just not good sleep. He can give us rest in our bodies. He can also financially bless us or giving you the parking spot you were wanting. Have you ever gone to the store and be like, oh, hoped your mom wouldn't park at the back of the parking lot because you didn't want to walk that far. You were just tired that day. God can bless you with a front row parking spot. <laughs> there are so many ways. So let's go ahead and pray that the Lord would help us with these things, empowering us and helping us to go forward. Okay? All right. Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your precious word today. Oh, for speaking to us about seeking you, Lord, and obeying you, God, that you would be pleased with us, Lord. I proclaim in the name of Jesus that you would empower and embolden us to seek your will. Remove any doubt, Lord, and the spirit of fear, God. We, God, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Replace it with a spirit of boldness and a commitment to your kingdom. Help us to be obedient and willing to do whatever you may ask of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't God good? So this is a journey, all right? This is something we're going to do every day of our lives, seeking him and obeying him, pleasing him, and drawing closer to him. This is our lifestyle. So let's begin this journey together. Join me in another song of worship about living for Jesus. Bye, guys. You have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.
journey.